everyone. Um, it's Nikki, creator of the Glow Code, uh, board certified coach, lawyer, around the way girl, believer, baddie, all that good stuff. We're here at the Glow Code Collective, and um, we are having another A-list expert around the way girl who is unashamed of the gospel who is also a psychiatrist she's also a businesswoman I said I wasn't going to introduce her so I'm going to stop talking so she can tell you all of the check mark check mark check mark her, oh, her resume is so like impressive um and I just think it's really important for us to really see ourselves and that's one of the reasons why I started this group um for black women uh, especially for all women who are believers but for black women to be centered um and to be able to tell their stories and for us to see each other in so many different manifestations um in different industries and so tonight we're talking about the intersections of faith and mental health which I obviously think is important all the time but especially in a time like this where people are super stressed there's a lot of anxiety there's a lot of turmoil a lot of uncertainty that people are dealing with I think that this is a very timely discussion that we're having here yeah so thanks so much Nikki I'm really just I love this opportunity to be able to share with other women other black women Christian black women Christian women in general and so I'm just glad to have the chance to share so a little bit about me I always like to introduce myself as a Christian psychiatry resident so I am training to become a psychiatrist two years away from being able to be board certified. Um, and for me, being a Christian is a really important part of my identity. So I have been a Christian for over 20 years at this point. Um, I came to Christ when I was six at a Bible camp in Tobago. And I am originally from the Caribbean, originally from Barbados, actually, um, but and really, really identify it with the fact that I am Caribbean. So I, I think a little bit about my background. So kind of, as you said, doctor, businesswoman, um, went to Harvard for undergrad, studied neurobiology there, went to the University of Pennsylvania for med school and for business school. So that's where I got my MD and my MBA. And honestly, throughout that journey, it's really just been about continuing to discover what it is that God has for me to do. Um, and it's really cool to be at this point of my life where I genuinely feel like God has called me to really talk about Christian mental health and to really be able to help, whether that's women, men, kids, uh, older adults, middle age, whoever it is, to recognize that as Christians, it is so important for us to talk about our mental health. So first, the thing that for me, I really like to, anytime you would hear me talk or share on Instagram or anything like that, I always wanna make sure that we start these conversations of really understanding the difference between spiritual health and mental health. Because when you're able to see them side by side, you recognize that, yeah, it's obvious that they are linked and that they impact each other, but they're actually quite different. So from the spiritual health perspective, what I like to talk about is the idea that, you know, your sense of self and your greater purpose is a really important component of what it means to be spiritually healthy. But then there's also this other part about the idea of your connection with God and your connection with others and with nature. On the other hand, there is your mental health where you're thinking about your cognition or your thoughts, um, your emotions and your behavior and how that is impacted by biology, neurology, your environment and your society and your, your social makeup. So when we put these side by side, I, I think it's super helpful because you see these are two very different things but you can also kind of rationalize and think to yourself to recognize, okay, well, spiritual health, actually, if you were to focus on improving and really growing your spirituality, that can really help with your mental health. So for instance, let's say that you have a strong sense of who you are. You know that you are a woman of God, um, that you know the purpose that God has for you. That can help with your emotions, help you to have a better mood, help your thoughts to be more positive, help, the, help you to make better decisions in the behaviors that you're choosing. So as you're growing that spiritual health, it then feeds into strong mental health as well. So that's kind of the type of relationship that I want to share and how for myself personally, especially in my experiences, kind of going through medicine and business as well, how those things kind of fluctuated over time. And then, as I said, kind of talk to you about how you might be able to use some of these uh, lessons that I've learned to then kind of use them practically for yourselves. So one of the things that I think it's so important and I really try to emphasize is this idea of using faith to strengthen your ment mental health. So one of the things I really like to talk about is learn growing your ability to hear from God. 
So there's so many different ways that you can work on this. And I mean, I am not a preacher, but you know, you can go maybe listen to some sermons, but some of the things I have learned from the sermons that I have listened to, um, you know, leaning on church community for support. That goes back to the idea before that connecting with others is so central to our spiritual health. Discussing challenges with religious leaders, spending time in prayer, that's connecting with God, worshiping God through our highs and through our lows, reading the Bible, getting involved in ministry. These are all ways that you can grow your ability to hear from God because you're working on connecting with others, you're connecting with him, you're connecting with nature, but then you're also building into your ability to remember what your purpose is, to grow that sense of self in your faith. I think some other things to think about from overcoming these mental wellness uh, roadblocks, um, from a behavioral standpoint, basically it's kind of the opposite of some of the things I had said before. So instead of making excuses, make a plan. Sometimes it can be as simple as sitting down to write just one thing. Um, something I like to say often is, especially in the moments when things feel harder to do than usual, it's better to do something than nothing at all. Even if it is the most, like the simplest thing on your to-do list, I always say something is better than nothing when it comes to trying to get things done. Finding an accountability partner. I think something that's super cool about the Glow Code is it's the space and a community of like-minded women, Christian women professionals who are here just trying to do the thing and live the way that God wants us to live. Finding accountability in a space like this can be incredible when it comes to overcoming the roadblocks to our mental wellness that are linked to behaviors. Writing down your goals, but more importantly, writing down God's goals for yourself. Incredibly important. Uh, research shows that people are 42% more likely to achieve their goals if they write them down. So if you want to increase your chances of, writing your, of achieving your goals, go ahead and try writing them down. Something else I find that's really helpful is focusing on your purpose instead of focusing on the praise. Um, that's something that for me, going back to that sense of spiritual health, where your sense of purpose is so central to that, when I focus on, for instance, like giving these talks and being able to kind of communicate and connect with others who want to know more about Christian mental health, I'm focusing on the purpose that God has called me to be able to do this work. And whatever, you know, if someone likes my talk or not, I hope you like it, but that's not the reason I'm doing this. I'm doing this because God called me to do it. And that's what drives me to keep doing this, even if I'm not having the best of days. Like you really, you know, snatched my edges um, a little bit when you put up, and I'm going to make a quote on Instagram tomorrow when you said like, focus on the purpose, not the praise, because mm -hmm. in, you know, moment of authenticity and vulnerability and transparency, like for me in um, kind of trying to build this community, it's like, sometimes like, I feel like people aren't getting it or people aren't responding to the magnitude or to the degree, mm -hmm. you know, that I wish they would. And it's kind of like, well, maybe I shouldn't even be doing this. Nobody's listening to me. Like nobody cares. Like if I was doing a bus, bus it open challenge, everybody would be <laughs> over here, but I'm just trying to talk about, you know, the Lord and give people some professional development and nobody's trying to hear me. But when I heard you say, focus on the purpose, not the praise, like that really, I feel like God told you to tell me that because mm -hmm. I, I really needed to hear that. Like, it's not about how many people show up. It's not about how many followers, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So I should just do it and be quiet and be diligent and, and be a servant and not worry about the celebration. So I really appreciate that. Um, that really touched me and has impacted me. So You're welcome. thank you so much. Is there any final words that you want to say? Yeah, no, I think I just always like to emphasize, you know, that we don't have to be afraid of having a mental illness as a Christian, that you can be spiritually healthy while mentally ill. And that is a okay. Honestly, it's just being able to recognize it and then get the help that you need. That's the most important part at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, amen. Thank you so much again. Um, you have a wonderful evening and um, thanks for being a part. She's a part of the collective, y'all. She's not just yeah, here talking. Yeah, I joined. Yeah. yeah she joined the collective. So thank you for being a member. Oh. Thanks for being a sister. And, you know, you have a wonderful evening. All right. Thank thanks. you so much. All right. Good night, guys. Good night, ladies. Bye. Bye.